brother. <laughs> All right, praise God. Good to have everyone with us. And uh, we'd like to welcome our visitors. Uh, we would like to warn you, though, that if you come to the church more than once, you're no longer a visitor. Now you're family. Okay. All right, praise God. Uh, good to have Brother Wooden back with us for sure. Good to have Brother Toller on the piano again. And uh, turn over to hymn number two. Two, if you would be so kind. And let's all, let's all stand together on this one. It's good every once in a while. I know Revelation is a book of, uh, book of eschatology, the end times, and so forth and so on, but it also gives a great picture of God's majesty and, uh, and just how they sit around and stand around and say, holy, 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 praise his name. Yeah, I, I want to apologize this morning in Sunday school. I guess I missed the point of the lesson. The point of the lesson was, to sum it up in just a few short words, is that we can serve God so well and love him so much that others can be drawn to him through us. All right, praise God. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, bringing that to my attention, Derek. 101, 101 in your hymnal, 101. I'm so glad that he giveth grace and not judgment. 101. 101, 101. Or 100 plus 1. However you want to look at it. Scripture here is Isaiah 40, 20, paraphrased as, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth 
with more strength when the labors increase to add it affliction he addeth this mercy to multiplied trials his multiplied peace his love hath no limit his grace hath no measure his power hath no boundary known unto man for out of his infinite riches in jesus he give up and give up and give us again when we have exhausted our store of endurance when our strength has failed here the day is half done when we reach the end of our hoarded resources our father's full giving is only begun his love hath no limit, His grace hath no measure, His power hath no boundary known unto man. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, He give up and give up and give us again. <laughs> Praise his name. Are any among us worthy of this love? No. no, of course not. Praise God. And yet, <laughs> he giveth more grace. Praise his name this morning. 44, 4, 4 in your hymnal.
strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings, O oh mine, with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercy. I sing all I have needed thy hand hath provided three times great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Lord unto back, Brother Wooten. Glad to see you made it back safe. Anyone have any testimonies or anything to be thankful for this morning? Miss Foster. Amen. Yes, sir. Establish your own quasi religion, which is nothing having to do with Christianity. Right. The core right. message, right. the core message is that, and I'm, she said it straight on you are responsible for everything that happens to you in this world and in this life. That's her gospel. And even at the time I heard that, I wasn't particularly well versed in Christian doctrine. But I <coughs> This is really self-serving of her because who is a greater example of succeeding on their own than Oprah? Though in truth, she was so much in the right place at the right time. Now, she's obviously a very <laughs> intelligent, bright, resourceful, talented woman. But she, I'll bore you with some TV stuff. Like a lot of local TV stations, the ABC <laughs> Sir, yeah. would you 
please praise Jesus this morning? We don't need this. Praise, yeah. I'm praise sorry. Jesus. I, this morning I'm all starving. That's Amen. all I meant to do. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And not praise stuff that is not. Amen. Okay. Yes, sir. Real quick for blessings of unselfishness. They follow me around the back of the plate, you know? And just, I mean, just the kind of who you are, you know, and you find ways to justify it through mental disorders or through addictions and stuff like that. It's just us making a personal choice to think about ourselves first, right? Ourselves. Me, 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 I, I, I. You know, and then wondering why divine gifts and blessings don't come in until the day that until you die. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to thank Jesus for bringing us to the right place at the right time. Good. When I need the most, ah. it didn't happen. Me straight. Good. 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 Amen. Dale? Yes, sir, Doug. The Holy Spirit showed up <coughs> Thursday night at the juvenile detention center. Man, and he tried to do his best to keep me out of there on the road, but he didn't succeed. And 18 young men listened to the gospel. And they all walked away. I don't know whether they're sincere, but keep these young men in your heart. Right. 18 young men. Prayers, prayer request. Yes, sir. <coughs> DJ? My family and myself are up with the things I've been thinking about. Okay. Yes, Miss Rhonda? Yes, sir. Okay. What's his name? about that very thing several times <clears throat> several times lately and and uh, I was just telling Jerome before he left man I, I know you guys get tired of hearing it because I've said it but I think thank the Lord that he delivered me from alcohol and and it's it's me and several other of you here are living testifies that without God it, it wouldn't have been possible and it still wouldn't be possible because uh, he but anyway yeah Paul
I think we can pray for uh, Stephen Chestnut. And Jody? Jody, oh, yeah, I forgot he was sick. Sorry. Yeah. Who? George. Okay. Jordan. Jordan. Dave. Just uh, as Joe pointed out, not everybody, not our couple figure of saying Christianity is pointing people to Jesus. So just as the Lord will continue to open our eyes to that fact and, uh, and draw closer to Him. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's stand for prayer. Dave, would you lead us in prayer? please
Thank goodness we don't have enough time for me to talk. <laughs> so I'm going to invite Reverend Ledger up here. And, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. Yep. I'm Amen. <laughs> me too. Reverend Ledger. <clears throat> His mercy endureth forever. Thank you for the precious old hymns this morning. Appreciate it so much. December 8th, 2019, nearly gone. Wow. First Peter, chapter 1, this morning. If you are able, please stand for the reading of the word. First Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse number 15. And by the way, if you would like a large print Bible of your own, we have some. See my wife or I, and we'll get your name on the list. And also we have some large print Spanish Bibles. First Peter chapter 1 verse 15. Amen. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written... Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's my wife to pray for me this morning. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Peter said, you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Amen. Usually when we think of silver or gold, that's a pretty incorruptible substance. But actually, over time, even gold and silver will rust away. It's corruptible. We're not redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. As a lamb without blemish and without spot. That reminds me of my, maybe my scripture of motto. You have a motto scripture would be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. And many of you know it by heart. For ye are bought with a price. What price? The very blood of Christ. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Who has redeemed us? The Bible says that God himself came down to earth in the form of a human being and offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. I believe that Isaiah was hinting at it when he said, who shall we send, or can we find anyone to redeem Israel? And then God said, I myself will go. I'll bear my holy arm. And he has done that. God himself has redeemed us from a life of sin and uncleanness. Why did he do it? For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why did he do it? Because God loves us. What was the price? Not silver, not gold. He gave his life for us. We were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. It was John that said in John chapter 1, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Who was he pointing to? Jesus Christ as he walked on the earth. The Bible says that some men would even dare to die for their friends. But Christ died for his enemies. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When were we redeemed? Our redemption was planned before the worlds were ever framed. Before the universe came into existence, God had planned the redemption of men. But on a hill near Jerusalem, Jesus Christ died on an old rugged cross 2,000 years ago, and his final words before he died were, It is finished. Our redemption is finished. He paid the price for us. Because he died for us, we have been granted the privilege and the power to become the sons of God. What were we redeemed from? You say, Brother Ledger, that's such a silly question. Oh, is it? Think about it a minute. Most folks who claim that they're redeemed are still in their sins, are still in their willful transgressions, are still in rebellion against God Almighty and Jesus Christ. He redeemed us from our sins. Amen. Amen. He set the captive free. Amen. When the Emancipation Proclamation was given and all men in America were made free, they didn't consider themselves still in the chains of slavery. They walked away free men. I'm afraid a lot of people are dragging their chains with them when God himself has broke the chains of sin in our life. Sin and the devil have been our slave masters all of our lives. And the Bible says that the wages, the payment for sin is death. Eternal death. Forever and forever and forever. All who sin must suffer the consequences of sin. If we do not accept a pardon offered to us through God. Jesus Christ is the only pardon that we may receive to get rid of our sins. He is the only one that can deliver us from an awful burning hell that was made for the devil and his angels. He's the only one that can get us out of that awful place and into the land of promise. Give us a heaven to go to, a glorious home forever and ever, and change us so by nature that the things we once loved we now hate, and the things we once hated we now love. Amen. I'm sorry, folks, but the farthest I ever wanted to get to a church was when they dragged me there for a funeral or a wedding. Now I delight to be in God's house. I delight to be there. And those who love the Lord delight to be there. The scriptures say, we are bought with a price. Therefore, did you see those words? Did you see those words? Therefore, therefore, because we have been redeemed, because God has purchased us with his own blood, because we have surrendered our lives, our heart, are all to Jesus, therefore, 
glorify God in your body and in your mind. Well, what does it mean to glorify God? Here are a few. There were 740 synonyms for glorify on Google. I picked out just a few. To glorify means to praise, to exalt, to extol, to laud, to magnify, to honor, to adore, to bless, to lift up, to sing praises to, to worship, to enshrine, to thank. Oh, do you know what? God loves thankful, grateful Christians. To thank, to love, and to admire is to glorify God in thought, word, and deed every day. Well, how do we do that, Brother Ledger? Well, the Bible tells us, he said, with our bodies and with our mind. Not only outwardly, but inwardly. Yes, our lips should praise the Lord. Our tongue should speak praises of our Redeemer. But more than that, we need something down on the inside. Our heart also shall honor the Lord. Our conduct shall honor the Lord. The way we talk shall honor the Lord. Our attitude and disposition shall honor the Lord. From our hearts we praise the Lord and glorify our Savior, our King, our Master, our Ruler, and the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The Lord has redeemed us from the power of sin. Amen. That means that sin no longer has dominion over us. We are no longer slaves to sin, but we are delivered from the power of sin. Past offenses have been forgiven. He gives us a clean slate. He said no matter how bad you've been or what you've done or where you've gone, if you'll come to him and confess your sins and humbly repent of the mess you've made of things, he will forgive you and give you a clean slate to start over again. But more than that, then he wants to sanctify you wholly. He wants to cleanse the inner heart of your, of your nature, that inner man that's within, that's in rebellion against God, that wants to have its own way, that center of self that just controls everything in a person's life. God wants to cleanse that out of our hearts and put his spirit in its place so that he, the Holy Spirit, will live and rule in our lives. We are born again. He gives us victory over sin and death and the grave. He grants us eternal life. And then he promises to reward us for simply obeying him. Has he not? Doesn't he deserve some praise, some glory, some honor from our lives? Oh, uh, Brother Ledger, you know, I'm a Christian, but... But I don't want to offend anybody. I remember I was handing out some gospel tracts in Mongolia. And one fella took one and he said, uh, thanks, uh, I appreciate this. Uh, he said, he put it in his pocket real careful. He said, I'll read this when I get alone. I wouldn't want anybody to see me reading this. Hmm. Wow. Should we not give glory to God with all our strength and all our will and all our heart? Indeed, most folks take and cast the blood-brought salvation, the pardon God has given us, back in God's face, and then they complain when they suffer the consequences of their own sins. Amen. Lord, why did you get me into this? He didn't have anything to do with it. We that are Christians ought to be proclaiming and glorifying God. Not just with our words, but with our actions. The mission motto is, What you do speaks so loud, I can't hear a word you say. You say you are a born-again Christian? Well, then when are you going to start acting like one? 
Someone said we have a lot of believers, but we need some behaviors. Yes, Lord, I will honor and glorify you at work, at home, and at the mission. I will exalt your name, for you are above all names. At your feet every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Lord of lords and King of kings. For ye are bought with a price, the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God created us for his glory. That's what the Bible says. Inventors don't invent things for no purpose at all. God invented us. He created us for a purpose, to bring him glory through our lives. Then he gave us his son to die for us that we could be redeemed. Now we have surrendered our lives to Christ and own him as Lord and King. To him be the glory, the honor, and the praise forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, there's power in praising our Savior. There's power in it. Power in praising our Savior. And even when life throws some horrible things at us, God is able to give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One brother asked me to explain something. The Bible says, If any among you be sick, let him call upon the elders of the church, that they may anoint them with oil. And if they are anointed with oil and prayed over in faith, the Lord will heal them. And this brother said, you know, there's a lot of people here that don't know that's in the scriptures. Would you announce it? And so I am. That if you have a physical disability, ailment, sickness, or something that is really troubling you, you can come to Christ and he will heal you if you will come to him and offer yourself to be anointed by the elders of the church. And so after this service is over, if any of you want to come down to the altar, I'm going to ask the ministers and the prayers to stay behind, and we will anoint those with oil who want to come. Amen? Let's stand together. Lord, thank you for your gracious help this morning. Thank you for giving us a voice, Lord, to praise you. Would you please bless now this little after service that we are about to have and go with each one of us today that we may be reminded that you are due all our praise and all our glory. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. <laughs>